Who scored 81 points in one single game? It's Kobe the Mumba Brian. Light up a joint and shout out his name. It's Kobe the Mumba Brian. Game winning trees, the king of the bank. It's Kobe the Mumba Brian. Gold like me teeth, purple like me drank. It's Kobe the Mumba Brian. People may say that the Lakers now suck, but he got five rings. All so right, very up. good, very good. Off you go. <laughs> working bad, or badly working. Excuse me, excuse me, everybody. If I may have everybody's attention, it is time for the gift giving ceremony. From House 76ers and the people of Philadelphia, Your Grace, it is my honor to present you with this autographed Lower Merion jersey. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Um, just throw it over there with the others. Could you please shoo them away? The stench is unbearable. Thank you. You may now go. Ugh, here we go. A teddy bear? A clutch doll for your youngest daughter, Your Grace. But feel free to use it to help you sleep at night. I hear it can be scary growing old and irrelevant. Well, I think it's lovely, Dwight, and remarkably soft. In fact, this must be the softest thing in all the land. A wonderful memento to remember you by. Hear ye, hear ye, his Ernest Jordan oh, has arrived. Oh. How lovely for Michael to show up. His Ernest apologizes he cannot attend your retirement celebration. He has a message for the Mamba. Kobe, I was like an older brother to you. Please enjoy this commemorative bubbling doll. Sir, uh, lovely. Thank you. Ah, Shack of Neil. Good to see you, old friend. Likewise. I'll bring you the finest donkey from all the land. Please, have your chefs prepare it, and do let me know how my ass tastes. <clears throat> and now, the ceremonial passing of the torch to the next great Laker. Clarkson, yeah, no chance, no chance. I think it might be Randall. It's gotta be D'Angelo. I would miss that chance. It's not it gonna be D'Angelo. Sends inappropriate ravens. What if it's a draft Maybe it's like uh, Wiggins or someone on another team. I don't think he's passing to anyone. I think you're right. He's he's refusing to pass. He's refusing to he's pass. He's refusing to pass. Just get the rebound. Long time no talk. Welcome back to an off-season episode of Lake Show's Finest Redux. I'm your host Charles Ryan. A.K.A. Chuck, A.K.A. KB24 status, also known as Kobe24 MP3. So, I was preparing an episode for the last few days about Tai Lu and going over, you know, the whole Tai Lu LeBron dynamic along with. Um, you know, how Kyrie would fit into the fold, and of course, next thing you know, we hire Frank Vogel, and uh, it looks like Jason Kidd as an assistant. Um, Frank Vogel got a three-year contract for $15 million, I believe. I would be happy if it was a, a team option on the third year, but that's neither here nor there. It's not like the Lakers can't afford firing a coach and then paying him off, you know, down the line. Uh because, you know, the like the Bucks still owe Jason Kidd, I think, $10 million because they fired him. All we owe is $5 million, $10 million, $5 million over one year if we fire him in the second year. But with the Lakers, we have money, and the Bucks don't, even though they're probably going to go to the finals. But um, this, I heard a rumor, and I say a rumor, I was listening to the Bill Simmons podcast, which I've referenced to, I don't know, at least five to ten times on this podcast uh, over the last few months. And also, um, I played a clip or two of Bill Simmons talking about the Lakers, uh, you know, him thinking for sure and get LeBron. Like two years ago, he said this, and he laid down all the elements to why. But he said on his podcast uh, a couple days ago, he was like, I heard the Lakers pulled out of the Ty Lue deal because Kyrie and Ty Lue didn't get along um, when, you know, Ty Lue was coaching the Cavs. 
and that's a huge red flag, obviously, because the Celtics just got eliminated um, two day, two nights ago, and it looks like it's really possible that Kyrie could come. So I think that's hilarious, and obviously that has led us to Frank Vogel, who I really don't think is that bad of a coach. I think he might have been the best option out there. Unfortunately, me and my friends were saying, why not just bring Phil Jackson for shits and giggles, you know? Because it's Phil Jackson, right? I mean, he coached Michael Jordan, then he coached Kobe, and then imagine if he coached LeBron, the three greatest players of all time. You know, you're pretty lucky when you get MJ and Kobe, 11 rings combined between the two of them. But then you get LeBron, the third best player of all time. It's like, oh, why not come for that for that job? I know he's 70, but I think that would have been hilarious. Um, Frank Vogel, though, I think he has, of course, a lot of experience, uh, been an assistant with the Pacers, coach the Pacers, coach the Magic, you know. The magic thing was kind of a BS thing, but uh, if you guys remember, you know, he coached the Pacers to a few uh, conference finals. Ironically, LeBron is the one that obviously, you know, cut them short and kicked their ass those few years in a row. But, um, you know, he, I, I think he's a great coach. I really do. Um, I was hearing, see, the things that I hear, a lot of this BS rumors is, I just throw it off. Twitter's BS. It's all BS. But when I hear people like Stephen A. Smith and Bill Simmons talk about rumors, I always take those. I don't think they're completely credible, but I take those rumors seriously. And I was listening to Stephen A. Smith, and he was saying that the Lakers really wanted Jason Kidd for the job. And by the Lakers insisting to bring Jason Kidd in as an assistant or an associate head coach to Frank Vogel, it, he, Stephen A. was saying it set up it sets up a path for the Lakers to fire to fire Frank Vogel should they not be ho- happy with him and then to bring Jay Kidd in right away. And Stephen A. was also saying, and I agree with this. He was saying that you know Jason Kidd hasn't coached in a while since the Bucks you know laid him off, and this gives him time to integrate and you know to spend time with the Lakers, LeBron, get to know them better until he eventually takes over, is what Stephen A. said. I think that's bullshit. I think Frank Vogel has way more experience than Jason Kidd, obviously. And as you can see, guys, you know, as soon as Frank, as soon as Jason Kidd got fired, and then that white dude, I forgot his name, took over. I don't know, not the white dude. The, the assistant coach with the glasses, he was a terrible coach. The, co- the coach that coached them in the playoffs last year, um... Did terrible, and they lost in the first round, and then right away, they get, you know, arguably the coach of the year, uh, Steve Boonholzer, I believe is his name, Mike Boonholzer, I'm sorry, and look, now they're the best team in the league, so it shows that Jason Kidd is not the best coach, and I, I think, I know it's one thing to have a coach, like Jason Kidd, who's been arguably one of the, I don't know, the top 10 greatest point guards of all time, but still, it's like, let's pump the brakes and get Frank Vogel in here, you know, um, I like him, and that's all I'm going to really say about Frank Vogel, but um, yeah, we're going to lead into a couple other things. This is going to be a shorter podcast because I'm really going to come out with a big one in a couple weeks when we have the lottery. I think the lottery is in like a week or two, so I really, you know, should we get, we stick, I think we have 11th, 11th best chance, should we stick with that 11th best chance? I'll be talking about, you know, draft picks and options and all that. But if we somehow get in the top four or even get the best pick, um, you know, then that podcast will be much longer and, you know, obviously more celebratory. But, um, yeah, so I just want to talk about a couple things. But first, I just want to say, you know, I really appreciate you guys um, sticking it out for those 30, 35, 40 episodes for the last season. I know I haven't posted in a few weeks since we were eliminated. I don't know, April 13th we were eliminated april 12th but uh as you notice i've been posting you know some random kind of funny things i posted a video um about (laughs) when the first game of thrones episode came out i was so excited i posted a video as you can see of me uh, one of the quotes from the hound and then i post another video called the ballad of frank lee and I'm just trying to, like, not drop off for the next four months. Because I, I, I've listened to podcasts. I've even seen YouTube channels where, you know, they, they stop for a few months during the off season for NBA, uh, their NBA team, their respective team. So that's not me. Uh, I, I'm not going to put it off for four months and do one episode over the next four or five months. No, that's not me. But I'm 
you know, putting these little funny videos out because um, <laughs> it's just, you know, fun. And I, I, as you can see in the past, before this podcast, I posted other videos in the past, um, like four or five years ago, most of them stupid video game videos when I was a youngin', uh, but a lot of other assorted things. So it's not like it's new for me to post those types of videos. But uh, the point is, I got you guys. I'm not going to leave you guys. I'm in it till the end. Should the end be 2021 when LeBron's contract is got done and then everything goes to shit or, you know, just till the end or who knows. Maybe the end of the world's coming because of Trump. But <laughs> I'm kidding. But, um, yeah, so one last thing I want to get to <clears throat> is Kyrie, Clay. Uh, and Kawhi, um, and I would say Kevin Durant, but I, I mean, that's a long shot of all of them, I think, but uh, I think it's great that the Celtics got eliminated in the second round, could not be happier, right, you know, you have someone who's been the championship four years in a row, and he wanted his own team, and he's done just like that, he's out of there, he's gone. Unfortunately, the Raptors are actually doing well right now and are up in the series. I'm sorry, it's going to a Game 7 tomorrow night. But um, I was really pulling for the Raptors to lose this, man. So Ka- Kawhi can make his decision faster, be upset that he lost in the second round and is not going to go to a finals like he has been in the past with the Spurs. But what's funny about that 76ers is... Uh, Raptors series was I I was initially pu- initially pulling for the 76ers to lose because um I wanted Monty Williams I wanted the Lakers to hire Mont- Monty Williams and the sooner obviously the 76ers lo- lose the series you know the sooner Monty Williams would come to us but um now it's funny how things have changed and then of course you know the Warriors are the Warriors and Clay might go to the finals again most likely versus the Nuggets or the Blazers. But I think the point is, is, you know, Kyrie and Kawhi, Kyrie specifically is the only person that has really, really shown the media and just has been really open about it that he he's going to leave. And he's kept his options op- open and hasn't committed. Kawhi is just naturally silent. But Clay Thompson did say, I think he said it last summer, he said, you know, Clay said something like, if I was offered the max from the Lakers, it would be hard to turn it down. It was more like it's if the Lakers offer him the max and the Warriors don't, I think he's going to go with the Lakers is kind of what he's saying. And he's kind of just saying it for the media. But I think there's some truth to that, right? I mean, the Warriors are already capped out. They're maxed out. Unfortunately, the Warriors are loaded with cash. Their new stadium uh, that's going to be uh, built has already sold out and made, made tons of money with their tickets and their you know uh, sold tickets already for games uh, next year. But um, I don't think the Warriors are going to give Dre and Clay a max contract. I think it would be easier for the Warriors to do that if Kevin Durant left. But still, I mean, they'd be so deep in the luxury tax. It um, be nuts if they actually somehow managed to sign Kevin Durant and Clay, And the next year, Dre's a free agent. So to give him a max, it just can't happen. So... Obviously, I prefer Kawhi. I mean, Kyrie over Kawhi and Clay. I'm sorry. And I, well, you know what? Kawhi and LeBron is amazing, but I, I, the odds are leaning toward more towards Kyrie and Clay. Because how could Clay turn down a four or five year, two hundred ten million dollar contract from the Lakers? I think obviously most people would say their options would go based on talent. It goes Kawhi, Kyrie, and Clay. But I want. You know, Kyrie, because I want him to be the point guard. I want to trade away Lonzo because he sucks and this is injury prone. But um, I really, really think that we have a shot. And, you know, there's other other players like Jimmy Butler. Should the Raptors win, Jimmy Butler is not going to be happy. I don't think Jimmy will re-sign with the 76ers unless they offer him a max. And if I was the Sixers, no way I would offer Jimmy Butler a five-year max contract. I'm sorry. You can't give... Joel Embiid already has the max. You can't give Jimmy a max and then expect to give Ben Simmons a max uh, rookie extension um, this summer. Um, Give Ben Simmons a rookie max extension. You can't have... It doesn't make sense for them to have three max players like that. So Jimmy's the third option of those three. But, you know, 
I don't want Jimmy as a fourth option. Should Kyrie, Clay, and Kawhi fall, fall out of the fold. So I'd ignore him. But things are really, you know, happening fast right now. We just hired a coach. And the next few days, we're going to see, you know, Kawhi gone from the Raptors or what. You know, so you got to... Guys got to be ready. Because in the past, I talked about this a month ago. Everybody was saying, you know, Kevin Durant's gone to the Knicks. I doubt it. Stupid. But that's another conversation for another day. But shit's happening fast. And I'm going to be vigilant as soon as um, you get a hint of Kyrie saying, I'm going to the Lakers or he, he, you know, anything like that. I'm going to come back hard and do a long-ass podcast on that. But, um, you know... I, I just want to put it out there that shit's really important right now. These are the most critical days because as the Lakers have a tendency, once one domino falls, the rest goes. Like, remember when we signed LeBron? And then within two days, we signed Rondo, JaVale, uh, uh, Michael Beasley, all these fools. Like, shit's going to go fast after this. Um, now that we actually have somewhat of a coaching staff assembled, I, I think we're more ready to go in a direction. And, and you know what? This is weird, guys, too. I was thinking about this today. Do we even need um, a, a, a president of Basel Operations to replace Magic at this point? Like, if Jeannie Buss and Linda Rambis and Kurt Rambis are essentially that trio of president of Basel Operations, along with Phil Jackson giving some insight, I don't even think we're going to get one. So we have our boxes checked there. So... Everything's in place right now. Um, I'm really interested to see what other assistants we get. Should Is Jason Kidd going to bring in some of his assistants that he had with the Nets and the Bucks before? Is uh, Frank Vogel going to bring some of his assistants from the Pacers or the Magic? Or what should it be? I'm really intrigued to see what happens. But, um, yeah, so this has been a shorter podcast. Um, I want to keep this brief, like I said, to set up the next next one coming around the draft lottery or what, anything else. But um, just coming back temporarily, on, I mean, real fast on this one because I'm not going to let you guys down, okay? Um, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Charles Ryan, KB24 status, Kobe24 MP3, and we out here. Cool.